हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ नक्शेबाजी आज हम लोग इसका जो सेवेंथ एपिसोड है उससे दो चार होने जा रहे हैं दिस इज दिस इज द टॉपिक विच आई हैव इन माइंड फॉर यू गाइस आई बिलीव दिस इज वन एस्पेक्ट विच इज नॉट वेरी वेल अंडरस्टूड बाय अ लॉर ऑफ अस सो मुझे भी बहुत अच्छा नहीं आता है Uh, but again i will try and uh, give you a decent understanding which will help you in making uh, a more sense of what is happening right now it will also help in uh, writing you uh, good high order essays right okay so with this uh, uh, you know uh, objective the objective will be here to understand the Uh, genesis and evolution how did uh, historically the ties between these two regions began and how they molded right so we will look at all that uh, but this is the region primarily which i'm talking about right uh, bay of bengal and area around it and of course your uh, mainland vietnam cambodia laos etc uh, uh bahut beautiful beautiful rock cut architecture bahut wonderful temples aapko southeast asia mein milte hain for example maslan agar aap yahan par dekhenge so this is a uh, you know uh, on the face of a mountain they have drawn this structure ye avalokiteshwar ka hai this is from cambodia right and we find such very very fascinating structures which resemble a lot to the indian styles of nagar and dravida right so we need to understand how how so right so uh, the temples at angkor wat i'm sure some of us would have heard these names here right the temples which this this vishnu temple at angkor wat uh, then there are temples at pagan right Uh, a massive uh, stupa a massive temple borobudur right that too in uh, java and uh, prambanan shiva temple trimurti shiva temple uh, these are some of the uh, magical names here right and they all indicate the deep penetration of indian art and architecture they penetrate uh, but they indicate ki kis tarah se kitna profoundly india and indian culture the indian arts uh, the architecture had uh, influenced their society right so today we are going to look at uh, these aspects uh, if you look at their temples if you look at their temples and compare them with our temples right Uh, temple construction in both the regions it is uh, peaking at around 12th century ce right both places uh uh gorse sunenge zara se ek do baatein theek hai so uh, if you if you compare the scale the size of the temple right expands the jo phailav hai mandiron ka right and if you look at the way intricately they have made those thin carvings on huge temple walls some of these temples are even grander than india than their indian counterparts aur kamal ki baat ye hai bacche ki these guys did not just simply copy and paste it. they used their own ingenuity as well they used their own ingenuity as well if you look at literature ramayan and mahabharat these epics are something which are very very uh, integral part of the societies of uh, southeast asia right they are a very integral part of uh, southeast asia in fact ramayan is something which is uh, much more powerful as a medium there because ramayan probably is very easy to tell and easy to adapt and it has a lot of focus on uh, ethical behavior doing your roles correctly 
right so but ramayan is very famous and you will notice a lot of different versions of ramayan which will have different uh, you know change in stories and themes as well right and uh, they also have uh, you know their shadow puppetry which is also an inspiration from uh, southeast coast of uh, india southeast coast of india this is called as vayang kuli tabhi main inke bare mein bhi baat karunga aap logon se so this is the area i am talking about primarily this is the area i am talking about primarily right तो ये पूरा एरिया जो है इफ यू लुक एट इट दिस व्हाट इज रिटन इज इंडो चाइना द मलाई पेनिनसुला सुमात्रा द बोर्नियो द जावा दीज थ्री आर द बिगेस्ट ऑफ द थ्री आइलैंड्स हियर सुमात्रा बोर्नियो एंड जावा दिस इज योर मॉडर्न डे इंडोनेशिया इज इट ओके एंड दिस इज मलाई पेनिनसुला राइट हियर इज मॉडर्न डे सिंगापुर what i am trying to imply here is that these guys are receiving they they are at uh, if you look at it uh, they are at a uh, you know uh, somewhere in kisi ek dorahe par jahan pe india se bhi influence aa raha hai and china se bhi influence aa raha hai and they are absorbing all that but not indiscriminately they are using their own uh, logic as well and their own taste as well do look at the map carefully we will come back to this if you look at their architecture it seems as if they have utilized the concepts which are given in the theoretical uh, uh, shilpa shastra texts of india but they are using their own ingenuity what does it mean it implies as if somebody has you know stated it somewhere ki dekh ke aisa lagta hai ki jaise in logon ne they read the books but they never actually saw an indian temple and hence they used their own wonderful ways of thinking they were very fascinated with the concept of mount meru mount meru which is considered the heavenly abode of gods primarily shiva it's a five tier uh, mountain it is believed so mount meru ki cosmology say southeast asian societies uh, they were very very inspired somewhere okay as i was telling you about this uh, vayang kulit right so this vayang kulit is something like this this is a form of shadow puppetry and in the shadow puppetry there will be this fellow who will be called as dalang he is the narrator or the puppeteer and they create these huge puppets and they have a white you know screen lit by a fire from the back side and the shadow is formed and through this shadow puppetry which is uh, coming from andhra right it is inspired from the shadow puppetry tradition of andhra this vayang kulit the local dalang they told and retold adapted and readapted the story of ramayana and spread it throughout the region throughout the region right and this is why you will hear that in malaysia right there will be a different version of ramayana which will be called as seri ram while in uh, cambodia it will be called as ram ke interesting isn't it interesting so they all have their own versions of ramayan this is the flag of cambodia and it has its symbol as the temple of angkor wat 
दीज आर दी इंप्लीकेशन ये है हम लोगों का इफेक्ट साउथ ईस्ट एशिया में वेरी फैसिनेटिंग इफ यू लुक एट इट इंडोनेशिया कैन यू बिलीव दट द इंडोनेशिया दिस इज सपोज टू बी द कंट्री विद द लार्जेस्ट मुस्लिम पॉपुलेशन एज ऑफ टूडे एंड देर नेशनल एम्बलम इज दिस दिस इज देर कोर्ट ऑफ आर्म्स इंडोनेशियन इट्स अ गरुड Garud is a mythical, legendary bird which is considered very uh, revered in uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism. वो उनके उस पे इंसिग्निया पे कैसे बैठा हुआ? They even call him Garud. Their primary airline is known as Garud Airline, Indonesian. the names out there will be you know uh, uh, you will always notice shri and uh, uh, yudhishthir such names still exist there very fascinating very fascinating right uh, uh, and i think the key why this uh, uh, is happening why this is happening the key to understand it ek cheez aur dekhna notice karna this is their official slogan bhin ek tungal ika कुछ नहीं समझ में आया मुझे लेकिन एक दो वर्ड्स मुझे मिले भिन्न और एका एंड व्हेन आई चेक आउट द ट्रांसलेशन द ट्रांसलेशन मींस उन यूनिटी इन डाइवर्सिटी सो डू यू सी द लैंग्वेज आल्सो हैज सर्टेन कनेक्ट्स हियर भिन्न भिन्न मींस डिफरेंट डाइवर्स एका मींस यूनिटी right uh, now the key to understand this puzzle is actually this statement i'm so sorry black pe black se likh raha hu matlab batao isko kehte hain beakli uh hinduism buddhism and islam all these big religions right uh, hinduism buddhism bahut pehle gaye islam thoda baad mein gaya uh, but they all went to southeast asia via south asia so they took the entire culture of south asia are wahi baat ho gayi na yaar ki jaise turks aaye the to wo persian culture bhi leke aaye the all the analogy is not exactly correct but you get my point sampe so these hindus buddhists and uh, muslims everybody who went to south east asia and made it their land they came from south asia and when i say south asia asia implies the subcontinent and as a result they took the distinct flavor the distinct culture of this land there where it was a uh, uh, indigenized local traditions usme assimilate hue jo wahan pe local form of worship thi such as uh, spirit worship ancestor worship spirit of mountain worship all that right all that it got uh, uh, portions of it definitely got assimilated right uh, this is a you know map at the a look at the geography of this place a look at the geography of this place here dekho zara gaur se dekho a lot of mountain ranges here with the dense forests so crossing them is a uh, tough east to west travel is tough but there are these three wonderful rivers there are a lot of rivers but there are three big ones irawadi salawin and mekong right these three rivers they provide easy north south uh, travel easy north south travel does exist right these are your three rivers here irawadi salawin Uh, this is Iravadi. They co. S A R A. This is Salween, and this right here is uh, Mekong. Mekong ends in your South Vietnam. Uh, the Indian influence. This uh, you know uh, everything which has uh, spread to Southeast Asia. This is this is again something which I should point out uh, because a lot of scholars point this out. 
this entire Indian influence, it was spread mostly without uh, any, at least, uh, you know, no perceptible evidence of large scale violence as such. No element of colonization, conquest, trying to drain the wealth out from that place. Such uh, ideologies weren't there. Right? So whatever they did, they did it very, very in a organic manner, you can call it. We simply went there in large numbers and made these lands our own. Right? Uh, there was no conquest, no colonization, unlike China. China, in fact, had a very torrid time and torrid history in this region. China had captured the entire uh, Vietnam region. In uh, 111 BCE itself, and they controlled it for uh, uh, more than 1000 years. So they tried to uh, influence this region using the sheer uh, coercive power. India's uh, 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 you know, influence was spread in a much more subtle manner much more subtle manner and probably that is why it is uh, so distinctly and tastefully yet preserved. Right? In spite of uh, Deco. So the early trade between the subcontinent and southeast, this began in 290 BCE itself. In Orient times itself it began. Right? And uh, uh, it was both land based as well as it was maritime uh, uh, too. Land wala root jo tha wo pura Bengal, Assam, Manipur, Burma and from there to the rest of the region. Right? And the maritime route will go to the uh, Malay Peninsula, Malacca, Sumatra, Java, Borneo, Sunda Strait, that region. Uh, but, so once the traders went on, the, those were the earliest harbingers. If you look at it, uh, the early names that we are told of these lands are very interesting, right? Uh, Burma is being called as a Suvarnabhumi, and the Java, Java, uh, Island, that is being called as a Suvarnadweep, which indicates the economic importance of these regions. Right? Or then uh, after that, slowly, slowly, Buddhist missionaries, Brahmanical missionaries, bhi jane lage. Right? Pallavs came in. They did not mind crossing the seas. Baki society mein caste based rule the, but Pallavs were okay with crossing the seas. And uh, from their times, it, it simply, you know move to the next level maybe you can say buddhists they took the buddha's dhamma right while the brahmins they took the uh, their all their uh, books the sh the shastra and uh, all the vedic literature right literature that dealt with the astronomy astrology all those aspects were taken this is one of the temples here at uh, Burma. The name is a Dhamma Yangi temple in Myanmar. Right? Look at how, uh, you know, Indian it looks. That's the only word which I can right now take. Look, this is an important map. If you understand this, then you will have discussion. I guess it will be easier and easy flowing for us. Uh, this is the mainland region. Right? This is the mainland region. This is the insular or the archipelago region. Right? This is the insular or the archipelago region. So what we are going to do is we are going to discuss Indian influence on uh, archipelago and then the Indian influence on the mainstream, on the mainland. Right? Dono ko ek bar hume halka halka dekhna chahiye. Uh, uh, agar tum archipelago, if we start taking about the talking about the archipelago first, then we notice archipelago, samajh na, Sumatra, Borneo, Java, right? Earliest settlements they appear in Java, 
around this time earliest Indian settlements, trader, Indian traders, Indian monks, their settlements emerge in around 60 centuries, around 60 CE in Java. By 2nd century CE, certain Indian principalities, kingdoms which were ruled by Indian dynasties, they also began to emerge. That means, kya matlab hua iska? Some ruling elites realized the importance and realized the use to which they can uh, put all this entire religious paraphernalia to legitimize their role, to legitimize themselves as the divinely ordained king. Somewhere that was the idea. Pahyan. If you, if you recall our class uh, of Fahian, when Fahian went back via sea, he did cross this region and he did observe and note down presence of a Brahmanical Buddhist influence here in this region. He mentions that, right? Uh, as I was telling you, during the Pallava time, the churn, Right, churn is increasing. More and more people are going out there, and Pallavs are starting to somewhere dominate uh, Sumatra, which left me as a Tirhawala island. Left, I mean to say, west me, right on the western side. And Pallav, by seventh century CE. They managed to create the Sri Vijay Empire in 7th century CE. It is this same Sri Vijay, it was a Buddhist empire. Right, it was a Buddhist empire. And it is this Sri Vijay empire uh, which was defeated by Rajendra Chol in early 11th century CE. Right? If you look at the mainland, if you look at the mainland, there also some of the kingdoms, uh, you know, uh, uh, their names are important for us. Jaisi, I will tell you, timeline. Hai. I believe UPSC can ask you a main question here. Right? Uh, Historically, this region has been neglected. Uh, but yes, we can look at it and get some ideas which can be very, very helpful. Right? So, what do I want to tell you, children? The first Indianized state that we hear of from Southeast Asia mainland region is this name, Hunan. They were controlling the Mekong Delta region. Somewhere this is the map here. This is Funan. It was a very huge kingdom. And they had this very interesting city. Ok Eo. Which was a very important trade center. A lot of Indian and Chinese ships come and met here. Right? So, uh, this Funan Empire, this is considered to be the first Indianized Empire. It emerges in 1st century CE, in the mainland. In the mainland, 1st century to 6th century CE, it exists. And under pressure of them, under their pressure, they also managed to, this region was known as Cham. Or Champa. So they managed to uh, uh, Indianize this region as well. They managed to Indianize this region as well. Earliest temples, inscriptions come from this region. Right? Uh, Funan. That is the first step that you should remember, right? Uh, they also have a very interesting origin myth. They talk on the lines, Kiba, you know, there was this princess, indigenous princess who was defeated by 
a merchant who came from India. His name is often given as a Kondinya. Uh, interesting coffee legend hai. Kai sources mein likha milta hai. And uh, people speculate that uh, what could this mean? Right? But this is how the uh, uh, origin myth of Funan is present. And they were controlling the Mekong Delta. Gradually what happens is that the Mekong Delta, its importance goes down. And Malacca becomes very important. Malacca becomes very important and as a result Funan, Funan, Funan goes away. Right? A lot of people say that Funan could have been just a simple uh, you know federation as well rather than one single kingdom but they were Indianized that's for sure and they emerged pretty uh, early. Okay. Iske baad bachche, uske baad jo hai tumhare, jab ye Funan era ends in the 6th century CE and now we get to see what is called as uh, uh, the Khamer or Angkor Empire. Khamer or the Angkor Empire. Let me tell you this entire narrative through maps then probably it will make more sense slightly. This is Funan. I'm telling you that the importance of this entire region, right, Mekong Delta, it decreased and Malacca increased. And as a result, this went away. And now we hear of Cambodge. Cambodge, which is also known as Khmer Empire, also known as Angkor Empire. This is the main uh, empire which builds all your huge temple of uh, Angkor Wat. And these temples are all UNESCO World Heritage Sites here. Right? So just to just to recap because I think somewhere uh, it may have slightly gotten uh, befuddled for you. So I uh, will explain a little explain what I want to say. You will understand that I am presuming that one of you is here. Uh, mainland mein Buddhist, sorry, uh, Indian influence on the mainland, Indian influence on the archipelago. First, we looked at the archipelago, and I told you about how Sri Vijay emerges, right? Uh, and then I am talking about the mainland. On the mainland, the first state that emerges, which is Indianized clearly, is Funan. It gives us the evidence of the first temple, earliest temples, earliest uh, stone, earliest Sanskrit inscriptions. They all come from Funan. By 6th century CE, Mekong is no more, uh, you know, economically important. Malacca is becoming more important. A lot of traffic has diverted there. And uh, as a result, uh, this entire uh, Funan collection of states, it breaks down. And a set of Chenla era emerges for 200, 300 odd years. So this is a, a, this is Khmer Empire, one map, right? One map for Khmer Empire, also known as Angkor. Their capital was called as Angkor Thom. And their founder was a Jayavarman too, as I was uh, telling you at that point of time. Or, uh, uh, somewhere was their region, right? Uh, gradually, Sri Vijay was very powerful here and these guys are powerful here. Right? And uh, gradually what happens is in around 13th century, finally what will happen, the trade will shift to Sunda Strait. Instead of Malacca, trade will shift somewhere to uh, Sunda Strait. And as a result, Sri Vijay will decline and uh, the Angkor will decline as well. And a new Javanese Hindu, a new Hindu group of Java known as Maja Pahit Kingdom will emerge. Maja Pahit Kingdom will emerge. And they will unite sort of the archipelago and also portions of uh, uh, mainland. Iske baat fir Islam ki entry hogi. This is how the entire influence will be carried out. 
right these are the important players that's the only reason why i was uh, uh, trying to give you some kind of a chronology of these kingdoms i know it's not a very natural task for us but the reason why i did it was uh, uh, that i want you to somewhere uh, not be scared of these these terms apne liye bahut important jo hai wo teen hi char hai funan shri vijay Funan ke baad tumhara Kamboj and Majapahit. These are the four names that you should remember in that entire you know thread that we are discussing. ठीक है अच्छा so uh, uh, their capital Angkor Thom was actually a center of Sanskrit learning, right? As I was telling you, their rock cut architecture. It shows a very strong influence of Mount Meru cosmology. This is the oldest Sanskrit inscription called as Vokan. It is found in the coastal district of Vietnam. This is the Cham region. Cham region, right? So, here we see, we have a very meter long stone, ka, triangular, this kind of stele. In this, it is Sanskrit, likhi hai, chaste Sanskrit. Right? Uh, uh, this is a, a very fascinating, I found it very fascinating. This is Ok Eo Temple. Again, found in, uh, you remember the same Ok Eo city we were looking at? Funan ki samay ki jo trade city thi. So, Ok Eo Temple. Right? Uh, this is the considered the oldest extant temple of Southeast Asia. Notice, notice the ling there. This is a, this is the ling which is a, which is worship. It looks so much like uh, uh, Indian architecture. This is the uh, Borobudur stupa. This is the largest Buddhist temple in the world. It was constructed by the 9th century Shailendra dynasty. And it shows clear influence of Gupta art in its intricate carving. Right? This is the Shiv Prambanam Trimurti temple. This is the largest Hindu temple of Java. Right? The temples of Southeast Asia are larger and built to impress. They are built to impress. Koshish yaha par raja ki ye thi ki na me keval, you know, it was not only a momentum, a memento to the God, but it was also to the, a memento to the God, you know, greatness of the king. To the greatness of the king. This also was constructed in 9th century. Borobudur was constructed in Borobudur was constructed in Java by Sanjay dynasty by, by, by Shailendra dynasty. While this one, this one, right, is also in Java constructed by Sanjay dynasty. It was a Hindu dynasty, so they constructed this massive complex, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, two hundred and forty temples. And they have tried to replicate Mount Meru, right? Uh, this is the famous Vishnu Angkor Wat temple. Karib gyara so chalis ke aspas me isko banaya gaya. The person who constructed it uh, was Surya Varman the second, right? Ye Khmer Empire ne apni capital city me banaya. Uh, this is considered as the largest religious monument in the world. Do you look at this image? If you look at this aerial image, the length of this entire passageway is 3 kilometers. Can you believe it? And all of that has been intricately carved. Right. Originally, it was dedicated to Vishnu, but by 1300, we noticed that it became more of a Buddhist monument in 1300 CE. Why? 
at the same point of time in India the exact reverse was happening Buddhist monuments were becoming Hindus in Southeast Asia the precise reverse was happening think about it find about it I am uh, you know there have to be multiple reasons I'm sure you would agree uh, with that I think I am uh, done for the you know uh, today's lecture and thoda sa mujhe lagta hai kabhi kabhi main digress kar jata hu i do at times give you certain additional details which are not very to the point uh my apologies for that i will try and cut that to minimum as minimum as possible meanwhile meanwhile Remember, these are aids which I am supposed to use sometimes, right? Kabi kabi zaroor pad jati hai. Meanwhile, you keep writing, likhne ki practice kariye. Put paper and pen together. Right, start writing. Get some personal mentorship if possible. Okay, and keep learning, keep learning. Nakshe bazi chalti rehni chahiye, okay? रुकनी नहीं चाहिए गॉड ब्लेस यू ऑल हैव फन आई लेट्स योर